I want to do a video here talking about run capacitors and when I first started in the business in the 80s these old run capacitors never failed I mean I might have had one every several years go bad now I'll get three run capacitors a day failing so I carry a bucket I switched to US made run capacitors to see if they last longer but the GE ones are bad with castor oil there's another brand the new jars with canola oil they just fail like crazy so I got some of these old vintage capacitors they're very heavy let's open them up and see what's inside now here's a new 5UF versus the old 5UF the oil is thinner on the old one and it's probably PCB based which I am washing my hands notice the old ones a lot bigger because the construction has changed the resistance I actually bought and it's called equivalent series resistance tester as I thought I could see some sort of differences in resistance the old capacitors actually have higher resistance and they have higher dissipation factors which means the old ones get hotter but they're bigger so they can take the heat notice how much smaller the new one is and it has better conducting because the way it's constructed is it's still rolled but the ends are welded so it gets a good contact of they use a spray tin and they actually weld the entire end of the plates versus old construction you're gonna get the end of a plate not in parallel you just get the end and it wraps it up so let's open these a little further and look at the insulator difference because I think that's what's failing in these new ones is the insulators are breaking down here on the new one you can see how that tin is it's not molten it's sprayed which means it's molten without getting hot but it welds all the plates together and then they just solder with a soldering iron right to the tin so you get a solid connection that hooks the plate in parallel versus you have to run to the end of the plate with that one and as I suspected the aluminum is much thinner and the insulator is part of the aluminum it's like a coating on it you can actually see through the aluminum it's so thin and older capacitor it's thicker aluminum almost looks like a paper insulator it's pretty thin it's thinner than paper they so had a better insulator on the old capacitors hence the bigger size so let's open up one of these big bad boys see what we got on this one at 70 degrees Fahrenheit it read 34.14 with a dissipation factor of 0 0.019 which was 10 times higher than a modern capacitor meaning this dissipates 10 times more heat than a modern capacitor but it's a big massive really heavy and I even ran it up to 180 degrees and retested the capacitance and dissipation factor compared it to the modern ones the capacitance goes down a little bit at the high temperature dissipation goes up a little bit because it's losing conductivity but it wasn't anything noticeable I think it really just comes down to the insulation but let's look inside this big old bad ones with these never fail I mean this thing weighs a good three or five pounds look at all that PCB 
So it's not card, it's not paper, it, it is a type of plastic. But it's just massive. The insulation is massively thicker than a modern 35 UF. See how thick the aluminum is, or if it's aluminum. And then also you can see it doesn't have the new technology of doing tin on the ends. It has to have run a conductor to the middle and then it just gets one point on the roll rather than the entire side of the roll like a modern capacitor. Ooh, ooh, that smell! It's got some rank, volatile smell to it. So it's just a thick, a really thick paper, or thick plastic insulator. That's why the old ones didn't fail. The aluminum seems to be pretty thin. I can't separate it off of the insulator. But it's the thicker the plate spacing, the larger you have to make the capacitor. Because that thing is, you know, huge. Ten times bigger than a modern capacitor for its size. They didn't even used to make dual capacitors back then. It was always separate capacitors. I clean this with my hand a little bit here. Okay. The uh, American Radionic, the AMRADs, I don't see these go bad nearly as often. So I'm inventorying them because I'm I've been changing out the jars that uh, five years. You know they last five years. So let's see if these AMRADs do better. I couldn't find anything that's physically better on the AMRADs versus the, the Chinese. They seem to be the same aluminum, the same insulator, but they do have a patent where their electrolyte is not a edible electrolyte because all the Chinese capacitors are either using canola oil or castor oil, basically a, a, an organic oil. So AMRADs supposedly they're using a urethane oil, and uh, which is like an inorganic. It's probably not as good as the PCBs, but they're banned anyway. So, um, we'll see. You know, five years, I'll see if these things go bad. It seems like when capacitors go bad, they do start getting hot. And I did test some of the capacitors which were going slightly bad. Test the internal resistance on them with the very expensive machine that I'm selling. I just bought it for the test. It's a... It's called an equivalent series resistance meter and it sends a signal one kilohertz through the capacitor and then it reads the voltage drop on that signal. But it is what it is. We're stuck with capacitors that don't seem to last as long as they used to and the industry doesn't seem to really care about that. Here's my stash of AMRAD capacitors. The common values that I use, I got to restock in the morning. One thing I wanted to show is AMRAD makes the turbo capacitor and they do an additional quality control, which is they measure the capacitance and they measure the internal resistance divided by what it should be. So it's the, called the dissipation factor at one kilohertz. And they even show a picture of the little machine they use there. So they do a additional quality control and also a burn-in of 24 hours at the factory. So it's a better quality control to weed out bad ones. And here's the tester I used to try to tell if I could see any difference. See it measures capacitance very accurately and then the dissipation factor or I could do resistance in ohms. But that machine turned out to be useless because the capacitors that lasted longer, they were actually worse as far as resistance for the reasons that I showed in the video. So all you can do is get a good capacitor, which the turbo cap is good. I rarely see those go bad. Actually, I've never seen a turbo. And I think I've seen one of these go bad that somebody else or a factory installed. So these actually might do better. And uh, it's the same company, American Radionics. 
I suggest using their run capacitors and of course made in USA they have a cool video on YouTube I'll put the link in there shows a little bit about it hope you like watching the video thanks for watching